embracing the pain. Is that what Warriors fans are going to have to do coming up in this next season? <laughs> what paid? <laughs> what are you? You're already what numb. Paid? You're already numb. What paid? I what mean, paid? I Warrior mean, fan paid. You might have to move on from Clay Thompson. Well, <laughs> Ramona Shelburne joined the Willard and Dibs yesterday. She said it could benefit Clay to play elsewhere. A lot of people around the league have, have said, I think he would benefit from a change of scenery, right? Like a lot of people, when you talk and think and watch Clay Thompson. I also, though, I think that he really is a fighter, and I think he's really proud of the legacy he has with the Warriors. And so I think deep down, he's a Kobe guy. Kobe stayed. You know, Kobe stayed with the Lakers. Like, he's, yeah, he still ate first, and those teams were really bad at the end, but he stayed. And so I think if they approach him with respect, with an admiration for what he's done with the organization, if they approach him like ownership level, let's go to lunch, you know, make him feel really good about, you know, we appreciate everything you've done and your sacrifice. We understand, you know, you'd be taking less here. Like, it's got to be on six. That's from Brother Shelburne. Brady Kravitz, 96.3 in Orlando. The game also does their pre- and post-game show. What, Clay in Orlando? How do they feel down in Delta Town? Here's Brad and Kravitz on Clay Thompson. In a, in like a best case scenario, he's the perfect fit for the Magic. He has a championship pedigree by all accounts, from what I understand on the East Coast. Good locker room guy. I mean, he's mm-hmm. played second fiddle or third fiddle his entire career, which is what right. you don't want to bring in somebody that's going to usurp Paolo Bancaro and his rise towards an All NBA star. Clay Thompson would not get in the way of that. He's still a knockdown three-point shooter. He's better than anybody else that's on the Magic roster in terms of three-point shooting, even in a slightly diminished state. So the answer is yes. So that's yesterday when Brady Kravitz joined us from Orlando down to 96-3 the game. Clay Thompson, would it benefit him to have a change of scenery? I don't know the answer to that. It's all what Clay wants to do. He's comfortable here. He knows the settings. He's got everything, everything. And you can end it if he does care about that with the big three. Well, what does the money look like? Does he want the years? From what I've heard, there has been no talks between Clay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors as of yet. The only deal that was offered was the one before the season, which was two years of $48 million. And they can negotiate right they now. They can negotiate. Yes. But what I've heard is that there has been no negotiations. Mm. They've kind of just all taken a step back. So does that mean anything to Clay? That, will that bother Clay Thompson? And no, we're not inviting Catherine to the negotiations, Brandon. No, Relax. that's not going to help. My, oh, it might. Uh, no, no, Clay, Clay, Clay Tho- does well for himself. Clay Thompson, and you heard it from Mona Shelburne there, he grew up a Laker fan. He idolized Kobe Bryant. He was his favorite player. And yes, Kobe stayed a Laker his entire career, and that means something when we look back on the greats of the greats and right. them staying in one place. But how did those but last six years end? It did not. It wasn't, great, it wasn't good. Um, last five, he missed the playoffs? Missed the playoffs. He had the Achilles injury. Wow. Obviously, that was the last year they even made the Imagine playoffs. That. Clay missed the, Kobe Bryant missed the playoffs his last five years of his NBA career. Yep. No yeah. playoffs with Kobe Bryant in it for five straight years. And obviously, the Warriors are going to a bunch of finals. They are going to the playoffs. You got the Thunder in there. You, you got, got Spurs, LeBron and you got the Cavs. LeBron and the Cavs. So, like... The league was okay, but we, we kind of forget like it was not a great ending. Dirk Nowitzki, after he won that title in 2011, yeah. it was not a great ending yeah. there. And Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, uh, Tony Parker going to... Tony Parker was on the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Like, like, like That happened. Now, would that look the same if Klay Thompson chose the Orlando Magic? I'm not sure. But I don't view Klay Thompson any less as, as a player or his legacy in the sport if he chose to go to another yeah, team, no. Would you? No, absolutely not. And you're you're absolutely. you're a Warriors yeah, fan. No, you're, you're, no, I would love Clay to be in a Warrior uniform, but I get the business. Yeah. It's rare that a player does stay with an organization. Now you're going to try to fit three guys, exactly. You know, Steph Curry, if he moved on and he was wearing another uniform, it would look weird. But I've seen this before. I've seen Hakeem Olajuwon wear a different uniform. I've seen Michael Jordan wear a different uniform. I've seen Scottie Pippen wear a different uniform. Charles Barkley wore a different uniform. Carl Malone wore a different uniform. Shaq wore like seven. Yeah, <laughs> Shaq wore, I mean, he went what, from Orlando to L.A. to Miami Boston. to Phoenix to Cleveland and then Boston. I mean, Kevin Garnett wore a different uniform. So it, it, it happens. It happens. But something gets, you know, just thought of me. Because you brought this up on our show call yesterday. And I was laughing about it. Yesterday's show, 
We're the Warriors flagship station here at 95.7 The Game. Kerry Warrior Games been doing this since 2016, 17. And I didn't think it would come up so soon. But we actually had five people call in yesterday and give us the opinion that the Warriors should trade Stephen Curry. Now think about Number that. five. And these aren't like crazy. Like Casey no. Marin, these are some regulars calling in Reg- and being like, you know what? Intelligent basketball fans. Yes. And we got five calls yesterday, which I thought would be impossible. Impossible. We don't even talk about these things. We don't even want our minds to go there. But we had five callers yesterday, which blew me away. Saying that, hey, we should trade Stephen Curry. I'm just like, wow. Warrior fans, some Warrior fans are just broke. But I just can't, like, we've gotten to that point with the Go to St. Warriors where people are ready to have that opinion and ready to say, you know what? Let's just rip the bad aid off and let's just rebuild now. It's gotten to the point, and he's of the age where it's no longer a crazy thing. Wow. Like, that's kind of the reality of this. LeBron James is 39. It's not crazy if you trade him. Now he's a free agent, be a sign and trade, something like that. But it's not crazy for the Lakers to consider that. It's not crazy for the Phoenix Suns to consider trading Kevin Durant. This is just age and reality. Yeah. You're looking at the rest of the West and the rest of the league, and the guys are all just young. Just We were just talking about the MVPs. How many of those guys... Are thirty and younger. Yeah, Jokic, he's twenty eight, twenty nine. SGA, SGA mid twenties, mid twenties. Luca, mid twenty. Like Jason Tatum. I mean, I feel like Jason Tatum's been nineteen his whole life because we keep bringing him back. Oh, he's just so young. He still is so young. Like that's just the reality here. You have these older players, and if you're not even making it to the second round, let alone the first round, then it's not crazy to think about. Hey, maybe we do take the OKC approach. Now, I don't think people are ready for that. Because it might sound all well and dandy. I think we blow it up. I think we get all these, you know, these assets, stuff like that. Just look how long it took for the Oklahoma City Thunder to right. reach where they are now. Right. It took a long, it took a long time. time. And I don't know time. Joe Lacob and this, In market this market are I don't patient know if they have enough. the patience. Yeah. It's easier I don't know. said than yeah, done. Yeah. You sit there and say, let's rebuild, let's rebuild, let's rebuild. You get through the first half of the season of a rebuild and things are not going well. Well, we saw it in 2019 20 when Clay was out for the season. And Steph got hurt in game number four Brutal. against the Phoenix Suns. People checked out so damn fast. It wasn't even funny. I mean, for crying out loud, the Warriors, <laughs> they gave us a free, they gave us a box here at 95 7 game. Remember that? I do. They gave us a luxury suite. They did. I mean, they're trying to get anybody to come to the game. This is the first year chase. Come here. see Eric Pascal if he <laughs> yeah. can make the all rookie. They actually team. won that game too. They beat Orlando. <laughs> oh my God. They beat Orlando that game. So Eric Pascal. I'll give Steiny credit that he knew immediately in that whole season. He's like, Yeah, this guy's not cut out for the NBA going forward. Oh, but on this team, he made the all rookie. <laughs> Who called us yesterday? Who called us yesterday made the five heartbeat heartbeat reference about Eric Pascal? It's a great question. Somebody I called us up, yesterday. I was too busy looking at right. the movie. Somebody never called us and made a five heartbeats reference to Eric Pascal as he's the the heartbeat who got drugged up. It was drunk. It was out the cruise begging to try to sing. Maybe he should go to the Knicks. He's a Nova guy. Well, that's what he was saying. <laughs> that he's the one Nova guy who's left out. Yeah. Oh boy. 